Hey kids, let's do some motion in space. <laughs> Feeling a little giddy here after my third or fourth video of the day. All right, I'm gonna go through this part pretty quickly, right? Where we um, did our position velocity acceleration stuff in single variable calculus and talking about in vector valued function, we have really the same thing. I get lazy with my double bars with the magnitude in vector world. I still sometimes use my single bars like I do in single variable calculus, but oh well. I do just want to make sure to highlight displacement versus distance here. That, um, right, if I, I don't need to integrate for displacement if I have a position function, right? It's just the change in my um, position vectors. So I guess I really should say this is r at time two minus r at time one. But if I call this vector, for example, if I have this vector and I have some position here, I have r1 gets me to that position, right? So let's say that's r1. And then let's say I have a, another point here. Well, vector r2 position vector r2 gets me there, and the displacement is just r2 minus r1, right? But distance is the arc length. Right, so sure, if I don't have a position and I only have velocity, I can do my... Um, antiderivative of the velocity function and just then do the second fundamental theorem of calculus and plug in time two and time one. But if I actually want the distance along the curve, I have to anti-differentiate still a, a definite integral, but I need to anti-differentiate the speed or arc length formula, right? So let's just do a, a quick example here in 2D. And this is part of your homework, whoops, sorry. Part of your homework is like this. I think most of the examples are in 3D, but whatever. Velocity. Vector. What is, the, what is the magnitude of that velocity? You're kind of used to that right now, right? At, by this point, you're gonna factor out the nine and you're gonna get cosine squared plus sine squared, which is one and nine times one is nine and the square root of nine is nice number three. There's my acceleration vector. Displacement, I have position, so I'm just going to plug in 3 pi over 2, right? I think you can do that. But distance, I need to anti-differentiate the velocity function, right? The magnitude of velocity function, excuse me. Well, fortunately, that was just a constant, so I get 3t, which gets me 9 pi over 2, okay? Units. That's position velocity acceleration. Now let's go backwards. So if I want to go backwards, of course, I need to give you an initial condition. Notice that time, I'm talking about when time is equal to zero. So velocity, right, that's just a one. So t, two t, and three t squared, plus the constant vector, right? So v of zero, which is zero, because there's no i, right? Zero, one, negative one. Plugging in zero for t, so you can see in this case that my constants are just zero, one, and negative one. So velocity is 
looks like that. Now I'm going to anti-differentiate again to get all the way back to position. Don't forget about your constant though. And once again, I think you can see at R of zero, I get one, negative two, and three. Plugging in zero for time, I'm gonna get zero, zero, zero again. So hopefully you're okay if I just kind of skip to here where I'm gonna have one half T squared plus one, T squared plus T minus two, and T cubed minus T plus three. All right, excellent. So not so bad. The new thing that we're gonna do for motion in space is talk about and focus just on our acceleration vector. So our acceleration vector is here in black. That's our acceleration vector. And I am told that in physics, <laughs> it is useful to break up the acceleration vector into, into its tangential and normal components. So think about the, look at what I have here. This, these two orange vectors, right, are a scalar multiple of the unit tangent. A scalar multiple of the unit normal. Here's its notation, the tangential component, the scalar notation. Right, these are scalars, gosh darn it. hate when I do that. These are scalars and they're going to multiply the unit tangent and the unit normal. And I can then say that I have a linear combination. My acceleration vector is broken up into a linear combination of some scalars of their unit of the unit tangent and the unit normal, right? Add these two orange vectors together, get the acceleration vector. So this website here is where I got this screenshot from. That's here. So if you can kind of see, there's, there's that picture. You can see as I move along the curve, right? The tangent and normal. Right, and you see in this case, I've got also those gray ones, those short, that's the, the, right, those short gray ones are the, before I've multiplied by A sub N and A sub T, right? Those are the unit tangent, the unit vector, and then I make them, right, scale them up or scale them down as the case may be. Well, I'm getting dizzy. Right, so see, moving along the curve there. Also notice no mention of the binormal. So everybody, right, we know that the unit tangent and unit normal, where's my plane? I'm missing my plane. Where, oh, there it is. Right, they're all, those are all in the same plane there, right? Everybody's in the same plane, right? The binormal would be perpendicular to that, right? So let me, the problem is that I need to know how to find these scalars. If I want to write my acceleration vector like this as a linear combination of these two orange vectors, I need to know how to find those scalars. Well, let me do a little bit of math first here. I'm going to give you a formula, right? I'm going to give you formulas for this, but I want to just take you through a little bit of the derivation, not too much but a little bit of it. I want you to remember that the unit tangent vector is defined to be, right, r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime, but isn't that just the velocity? So this is v of t over the magnitude of v of t, right? If I ask you to forget about this, if I want to just use the velocity, and I want you to get velocity by itself. I want velocity by itself. 
the velocity vector is equal to the unit tangent vector, unit tangent vector times the magnitude. Now I'm going to get lazy here. I don't want to keep using this notation. I'm going to call this super bold V. Super bold, super bold. So super bold V times the unit tangent vector. Right? That's a way to ex to express velocity. Now, how do I get acceleration if I want velocity? Let me just take the derivative, right? Take the derivative of this to get me acceleration. Now, acceleration, right? Velocity is a product. So how do I have to deal with this? V prime, right? The derivative of the first times the second. And remember, this is bold, super bold, plus super bold times the derivative of the unit tangent. Now, wait a second. There is another linear combination. There's another linear combination of acceleration. And remember, recall what I just gave you, a linear combination for acceleration. But I said that was... Right? So look at what I have here, though. Look at what this is. Do you see this component here? And look at this here. Aren't they the same? So What's going so super bold V isn't super bold V must be A sub T. And that should make that should make sense, right? It's a derivative. A. Now, what about this A sub N part though? So let me focus over here. And I want you to remember the curvature formula. Curvature is the magnitude of unit, torm unit normal prime, unit tangent prime, sorry, over super bold V, right? Which is the magnitude of velocity. Well, what if I want you to get the magnitude of velocity by itself here? <laughs> the magnitude of the unit normal by itself, excuse me. Super bold V, I like saying that. But also recall that the unit normal, the unit normal is defined to be and I'm kind of dropping my T's and all that again, my sub, you know, my parentheses T's thing. And this time I want you to get T prime by itself. But hey, 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 what did I just say with curvature up here? Using my curvature formula, look what I got. An expression for the magnitude of T prime. So I'm going to replace that and I'm going to say T prime is your normal times KV. Now I want to go over here and look at what I have. I have an expression for T prime, don't I? So using the product rule, I got the acceleration is equal to V prime T 
plus V, super bold V, remember these are all super bold Vs, times this blue box, which is K V N. Hey. Hey, look at what I have now. A scalar times the unit tangent, the scalar times the unit normal. Look at what I have here. So we already figured out that this must be a sub t. This must be a sub n, omg. Now I want you to remember that because remember this is a way to describe acceleration, right? So think about when I am, uh, what this, you know, when my curvature with your velocity is freaking squared and you have a large, right? A large curvature. And remember what your unit normal does, points inside of the, of the concavity? Man, that's called, a, that's called whiplash right there. <laughs> Here, let me, let, me, let me clean this up a little bit. Right, so here's me talking about how I'm gonna use super bold V for the magnitude of velocity and little kappa as the curvature, there is my formula for a sub t. a sub t is v prime, right? That's what I just said in that before, right? The tangential scalar component of your acceleration vector is super bold v prime, right? Remember that's the acceleration magnitude of the velocity vector, excuse me, prime. This should look familiar. It's the dot product of the first and second derivative divided by the magnitude of the first derivative. That's how I get the scalar a sub t of the tangential component. The normal, which is the normal component of the acceleration vector is the curvature times the square of the super bold, super bold v right, which is again, the magnitude of the, of the velocity vector. That's a cross product, the magnitude of the cross product or the absolute value of the cross product divided by the magnitude of velocity, omg. And again, combining those with our unit tangent and our unit normal gives me those two orange vectors and a linear combination of my acceleration vector. So an acceleration vector broken up into its tangential and normal components with the appropriate length. But again, these kind of make the physical sense, right? This doesn't make too much physical sense to me, but knowing that the multiplier on my unit tangent is the magnitude of velocity, and the multiplier on the normal, which is the, has got curvature in it, is, right, the curvature times the square of the velocity should give me some kind of intuitive sense as to what that acceler acceleration vector can tell me. Since the, since the tangential, since the unit tangent is the direction of the curve, the tangential component of acceleration is the rate of change of the speed, v prime. Since the unit normal points in the direction that the curve is turning, that normal component of acceleration is the curvature, the curvature times the square of the speed, oh my goodness. So, right, go speed racer, go. If you were in speed racer's car and going around, right, a sharp turn, a sharp turn, remember, means a large value of curvature. 
So the component that's pointing inwards on the concavity, it's perpendicular to your motion. That's large and boom, you get thrown against the car door. Right? High speed has the same effect. Think about what happens if you double speed. Oh my gosh. Craziness. Right? Be careful. <laughs> All right. There's me doing about the limit of my physics notation. <laughs> physics knowledge. All right. We'll do some examples in class and in your homework. All right, have a good one.